If you're only going to read one document about the TOK exhibition, then the subject report of May 22 is the document to read. It's the most definitive explanation of what the TOK examiners are looking for. I look at the contents of the subject report in a video published earlier and linked in a card above, but I mention it here because it informs this video. And this video is about building skills for the TOK exhibition. There is some mystique, chatter and a little confusion about the TOK exhibition. And my starting point with any TOK assessment is that it's about skills. So we need to identify and teach the skills required for the exhibition. I'll just take this opportunity to plug the TOC skills map linked in the video description below. Please have a look at that and feel free to suggest any skills that are yet to be added or developed on the map. I will also take this opportunity to beg for a like, a subscribe, a comment or a share if you find these materials useful. So what are the TOK exhibition skills? I've developed the following map of the specific exhibition skills which we can use to guide us in our teaching. At the top I see two meta skills. These are overriding skills needed to do well in the exhibition. I think these are developing an argument for the objects and justifying that argument. However, these are fairly abstract skills and we need to break them down into tangible things that students can do and practice and develop to do well in the exhibition and I call these the foundational skills. The foundational skills are identifying an appropriate subject, identifying an appropriate object, constructing a knowledge link between the object to self, constructing a knowledge link between the object and the prompt and identifying the unique contribution of that object to the prompt and identifying evidence for the object's contribution to the exhibition. Now that we've identified the discrete foundational skills required for the exhibition, we can start to design learning tasks for each of these skills. And we can build these learning tasks into TOK teaching from very early on in the course. I created a lesson to help students to develop these skills, which is available for free from the TOK Today website. Along with the materials for that lesson, this is all linked in the video description below. Now the lesson is designed to be given in the first few weeks of the TOK course in DP1, so we can shortcut some of the gaps in knowledge that students will have at this stage. And this is done by, number one, I devised my own prompt and gave it to the students. In this case, the prompt was, why do we change pre-existing knowledge? The main reason for me giving them a prompt means that I can guide the choice of objects to help them to build the first skill of identifying an appropriate object. It also gets around any problems of academic honesty, of reusing prompts later on, etc, etc. I asked the students to bring an object which had either wowed them or had changed the way that they think about the world or think about something. By directing them, I was helping them to develop the skill of identifying an appropriate object. And we spent a considerable period of time discussing the objects that they chose and why they chose those objects. I then went on to show them how to develop their personal link to the object into a knowledge link to the object. This is the gap of understanding for students at this early stage in the TOK course. That is moving from the experienced or lived world to the TOK world. Their ability to do this will develop through modelling and familiarity with the contents of the course. Now before we go on to the contribution of the object to the exhibition, what I call the argument, I shared with students the exemplar that I'm showing you now. I wrote this exemplar and it's also linked in the, the web post on this lesson. The reason for showing the exemplar was simply modelling. It shows them what they're meant to do and that's super important in TOK. At the end of the exemplar, there are a set of questions and annotation tasks which are designed to help the students to identify where in the exemplar I've linked my own experiences to the knowledge world and the knowledge prompt. So I'm just trying to model that skill for them before asking them to do it themselves. Now at this stage, we're taking things very slowly. I am modeling how to make the links and then asking them to do it with their own objects. I'm giving them a lot of verbal and written feedback on what they're doing. This is really the process of creating the TOK mindset. 
If you don't know what that is, I made an earlier video on it, which I'll link in the card above. And this is the heart of TOK. Once students have developed the TOK mindset, they've cracked TOK, so to speak. Now, the last skill that I built in this lesson is the identification and the use of evidence for the claim arising from the object. The subject report really clarifies what examiners want as evidence for the claim, and this is required for them to get into the top three marking bands. I think it's fairly easy marks, so it's something to start building now. Okay, let's leave it there for now. This video has certainly been long enough. I'll be back with more videos building higher level skills for the exhibition in, in the coming weeks. And there are more details and resources available from the TOK Today website. A like, a subscribe, comment or share are free. They help me and are greatly appreciated. In the meantime, I'll just wish you a talktastic day. Bye for now.